guys, are you curious about OMAD one meal a day? I'm here to tell you I am back on OMAD. I actually tried it when I was first on keto and I'm actually back on keto after, I don't wanna say straying, but adding carbs back into my life the end of last year. That was not a positive experience for me. But today I'm gonna to be telling you about my experience in getting back on OMAD one meal a day. It's week number one and I'm already two and a half inches down, extremely excited. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you about my version of OMAD, some of the options, how you can do it, why I'm a huge fan of it, and why I think you should try it. Tune in to learn more. Hey guys, you know the drill. Make sure that you are subscribed and also hit that little bell button so that you're notified anytime that we put new content out. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kelly Alexa, and today we're gonna to be talking about OMAD in case you haven't heard of that before. OMAD stands for O-M-A-D. No, I'm not mad. It stands for one meal a day. Now, some of you might be listening to that and going, why would I wanna have one meal a day? Well, don't overcomplicate this. Really, one meal a day is in, in my opinion, this is really just another version of intermittent fasting. So a lot of you who tune into me are probably already intermittent fasting. For those of you who are not intermittent fasting, who may have heard of intermittent fasting, let me give you a brief lowdown. For those of you who are already intermittent fasting, just go get yourself a cup of coffee while I'm explaining this. So intermittent fasting is really a way for you to um, fast and shorten your eating window so that it makes it a lot easier for you to consume less calories and thus eat in a caloric deficit. So for example, you'll hear people talk about protocols like a 16-8 protocol or a 20-4 protocol, something like that. And what they mean by when I say 16-8 or 20 Four. They're talking about 16 um, hours where they're not eating or they're sleeping and maybe part of that they're awake but they're not eating. Eight hours is their eating window <clears throat> where they're actually eating their meals. Now, in that eating window when you're intermittent fasting, you might eat three meals. A lot of people, myself included, when I'm intermittent fasting, which is what I've been doing for most of the time, most of the time I'm on keto, which I think is the best way to go. That's what I heartily recommend to most of the clients that I coach uh, on keto. If they can do it, if they're a fan of it, if it works for their lifestyle, I recommend doing intermittent fasting and doing uh, two meals a day, if that works for you. So ideally, you do like a 16-8 protocol. So you'd go to bed at night. I mean, if this is, if this is, this tends to be what works well for most people. You eat your last meal, which is dinner. You go to bed, you'd sleep through the night. So you get, you know, eight hours of sleep. That's, you know, a, a probably half of your um, fasting out of the way. You get up in the morning. Now, the way that I do intermittent fasting is, you know, I'm not hardcore. I'm not gonna get up and just have, you know, I'm not looking for hardcore autophagy. We'll talk about autophagy in a different video. Um, but I'm not gonna get up and have strictly black coffee because I'm like obsessing about, oh my God, is this gonna break my fast? I'm not that girl, okay? Um, for me, again, I use intermittent fasting, and again, I also use OMAD for more of shortening my eating window because it's a way, a method of controlling when I eat and how much I eat versus am I, am I looking to do autophagy. When I'm looking to achieve autophagy, I'm gonna do more of a 24 hour fast. And in that case, that's when I'm gonna consume nothing but my exogenous ketones, um, bone broth and black coffee. And that's when I'm gonna be probably a little bit of a bitch. <laughs> Maybe not really. Um, so anyway, um, back to intermittent fasting. When I'm gonna be doing a 16-8 protocol, um, I'm gonna get up in the morning, I'm gonna have one of what I call my keto bulletproof coffee. I'll talk about how I make that in just a second. And because again, I do that as well when I do uh, one meal a day OMAD. I, I have a bulletproof coffee, typically just one of those. And then I don't eat until um, lunchtime, which for me is usually about 1.30. My dog.
dog is chasing a squirrel out back. Sorry about the noise. Um, 1.30, sometimes it's even two o'clock. Um, during that morning time, I will have my first serving of exogenous ketones, which you can see in this huge um, iron flask. This is a 33 ounce jug. filled with ice water, and then I put my exogenous ketones in there. I've done another video on exogenous ketones. They are honestly one of my favorite tools, one of my favorite supplements. I'm obsessed with them. Also a distributor for Prove It Exogenous Ketones. Um, they have changed my life. Um, and even if you are not keto, you can benefit from exogenous ketones. They help with um, mental acuity, um, actual clarity of thought, focus. They'll give you fantastic energy. Um, before I was having, um, this is a complete sidebar on ex exogenous ketones, obviously. I'm trying to give you a snapshot in case you've, this is the first time you're hearing of them. Um, before I started taking exogenous ketones, uh, you know, right when I went keto, um, I was hard crashing every day, right about two o'clock and having to take a nap. I would go into my bedroom sit on the chase lounge in my bedroom and set my uh, iPhone, my little iPhone here, exhibit A, I would set my iPhone for a half an hour and I would take a nap and then I would wake up and I would be like, I need to have another half an hour. And, and I remember thinking, oh my God, I can't take an hour nap every day in the middle of the work day, like WTF. And right after, swear to God, after I started taking ketones, I never had to take another nap again. It was like, I felt like I had adrenal fatigue again. It was just a very strange situation. So ketones for me really help with energy. Um, many people talk about how it helps them with focus during the day. Um, for me, it has changed my appetite and curbs my cravings. Um, when I'm really good on my keto plan, um, and not eating carbs like obviously I don't when I'm on keto. I, I just don't snack, I don't think about food, um, and I don't have the cravings that I used to have. Before I went keto, I used to be somebody who was obsessed with food, um, binging a lot, eating in secret, um, just a carbaholic and, and thinking about food all the time. Um, so for me, you know, if you can find it in your budget, um, a serving of ketones is about the, the price of a cup of Starbucks coffee if you go to Starbucks. Um, so it's not that it's cheap, but to me, the investment is something that, like, I would find a way to have this in my life no matter what, because it is, I have no problem saying it, it is life changing. That is how much of an impact this has made on my life from an energy perspective, from an appetite control, from a curbing cravings perspective, um, and then, you know, focus and some of these other benefits are, are behind it. And, and those are just some of, those are just a few of the benefits, um, but, but that's a sidebar. So again, um, when I'm doing my intermittent fasting, wake up in the morning, I'll have a cup of coffee, then I drink, you know, and I kind of sip on this. I don't chug this. I sip on exogenous ketones and water um, throughout the morning. Then I'll have my lunch around 1.30 or 2. Um, I don't snack, and then I'll have dinner when my husband gets home. Um, usually we eat dinner pretty early if I can. Um, I'd say we try to be finished with dinner by 5.30, 6 o'clock, you know, for me. Um, I like to eat early, and then we don't eat after dinner. We don't snack. Um, Ideally, that's going to be good for everybody. And then again, you know, you're going to not eat until, you know, the next morning. So you're eating in that shorter window. Now, what's the difference between, so, so that's an example of intermittent fasting. Some people squash that window down even more. I said it's 24, 20 slash four. Some people will only eat between like 12 and four or between four and eight. You know, it, it really is personal preference. And you could almost say, that a 20 slash four protocol could be an OMAD, one meal a day. So what's one meal a day about? How did I find out about it? And why did I start? <clears throat> um, really, the, the first place I was exposed to it was a gal uh, called Ashley Salvatore here on YouTube. I will link up to one of her videos down below big fan of hers. Um, she was keto. I'm pretty sure she's not keto anymore. 
um, but I'm pretty sure she's still doing OMAD. She's just not doing keto. Um, and, you know, different strokes, different folks. For me, um, being on keto is better for me. For her, being off keto is better for her. Do I plan to be, and we'll talk about this in a separate video, do I plan to be strict 100% keto the rest of my life? Absolutely not. I am back on keto, being strict keto for a certain period of time to hit my goal weight again. Um, and then I will be um, incorporating specific carbs back into my life in a much more deliberate manner than I did the end of last year. Again, I will talk about that in a separate video. If you want to see um, what happened when I did add carbs and why it was an unpleasant experience, why I'm back on keto now, just look at the videos I'll link down below in the, in the information down below and you can watch that. Today we're strictly going to be talking about OMAD. Um, so the first time I heard about OMAD was when I was in, in my year, about a year and four months of strict keto. This is before I started adding carbs. I added carbs the last about three and a half, four months of last year um, of 2022. Um, so I watched one of these videos by Ashley Salvatore. She was talking about OMAD and for me, I just have always, um, I work from home, I own my own businesses, and there's, there's many times that I've either unintentionally or sometimes maybe just because I have an order from Instacart in a timely manner, um, I, I don't have enough stuff, you know, prepped or meal prepped now. I'm much better at this now, but historically, those of you that have been tuning into me for a while, you know this. Um, a lot of times I will not eat my lunch during the day, or I will go to eat, you know, make my lunch and, and I'm really busy. I've got a lot of stuff planned during the day and then I've got a Zoom, I've got an appointment. And then I go to look in the refrigerator and I'm like, ugh. You know, there's nothing thawed, there's nothing made, I don't feel like doing this. And then I, I skip it and and then before I look up, before I know it, you know, it's 3 30, 4 o'clock and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna make lunch when my husband's coming home and it's you know like five o'clock. So I, I ended up, you know, watching this video about her doing one meal a day. And, you know, she explained this whole concept about how she'd done the research, one meal a day, it's not about the whole concept of doing one meal a day is not about you eat one meal a day and you don't, and, and, and you're just gonna have one small meal. I mean, this is not about being, like I said on Instagram today, it's not about trying to be Gwyneth Paltrow going, well, I just have a cup of coffee and then some bone broth and then a few blades of grass for dinner. Like, no, you're not trying to not, you know, you're not trying to eat 400 calories a day. That's not appropriate. In fact, um, you really are supposed to be focusing on eating enough. And, you know, that's why some people, and Ashley talked about this too, she said sometimes when she would do, um, when she's done OMAD, she would have like an appetizer and then, you know, an hour later she would have a dinner and then maybe an hour later or something, or maybe she might have dessert. So she would have more to eat at that meal than she would have at a typical meal because again, she's eating one time. Now, this might appeal to some of you. Um, like for me, I never liked that idea of having six small meals a day at 200 calories or 400, 300 calories or whatever and having these like little baby meals. You know, it's like airplane meals. Like here's your little piece of quiche and here's your little side of bread. Like I want a meal. Like, you know what I had yesterday? I had, um, we made Salisbury steak. It's from my keto cookbook. Oh my God. It's the best. Salisbury, I'm, I'm just thinking about it right now. I might start drooling. Salisbury steak and these Yukon gold um, mashed potatoes. Oh my God. I mean, like the serving of Salisbury steak, each one of these is like this big. Okay, so I had I had that, and it, this was leftovers. So I just heated it up, and then it has this mushroom gravy with these chopped up mushrooms in it, and I had that. And then I, for dessert, I made some. Um, now this is not like really somebody's gonna be like, is that really keto? Well, I just that's what I wanted. I had it um, 
couple of dates, many jewel dates with some um, almond butter in them. But that's what I had and I was completely satisfied. That's what I had all day yesterday. So I had yesterday, I started my day off with um, keto, um, my version of keto coffee. I'll explain how I make that coffee in closing in just a second when we wrap this video up. Um, I had actually two of those, which is very typical for me. That's how I do OMAD. Again, I'm gonna summarize this for you, um, and I'll also summarize that for you guys down in the comments. It's pretty simple. The way that I do OMAD is I will typically, and Ashley talked about how she did this too, so I actually followed her guidance. I believe she does her OMAD differently now. I believe she does black coffee now. And she talked about this in one of her most, most recent videos. She said that she does more of the black coffee and doesn't have any calories or, or cream in her coffee because that can stimulate, it was either ghrelin or leptin, um, the, the hunger hormone or whatever. For me, it I'm okay with it. Like for me, having my keto slash bulletproof coffee, um, it, it's something I look forward to in the morning. And yeah, do I have hunger pangs? Um, slight hunger pangs throughout the day? Sometimes, yeah. But the truth is, I'm just keeping it real. If I ever have like a noticeable hunger pang, I literally pick this up. And like if I have a bad hunger pang, and they're usually not that bad, but if I have a, a hunger pang, I, I take my ketones and I, I chug a few chugs like that. And they like, it's like, this is magic elixir. I swear to God, I'm not saying this just to try to sell you guys some ketones. It's just, that's the way it is. But to me, I just know how well OMAD works for me. And I lost 2.5 inches in my first week. And it wasn't even a full week, you guys. It was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so it was five days. In five days, I lost two and a half inches. Well, let's see what I do next week, okay? And I'll keep you guys posted. So for me, um, I'm gonna try this first phase with having my Bulletproof coffee. If I feel like I need to take it up a notch and go with black coffee, I don't see myself doing that. I'd rather almost like poke myself in the eye with a fork than have black coffee if I have to. Um, I'd rather go without. I'd rather go without coffee than to have black coffee. I freaking hate black coffee. I don't know why anybody would drink black coffee. It's just death. Death in a cup. Um, so I have one to two cups. I usually end up having like one and a half cups of keto coffee. The way that I make keto coffee, just so that you know, really quick, I'll, I'll tell you how I make it. I make a shot. I actually make an Americano with my Nespresso. Um, I put one tablespoon of grass-fed butter in it. And then I use my, um, I'm gonna just show you. I'm gonna bring you guys with me over here. I use my uh, Prove It uh, Keto Cream. So I put one packet of this in. This is made with MCT oil. And the reason I'm telling you this is because it's the MCT oil in this. This is 130 calories. This is what will keep you full. So if I just made a Bulletproof coffee with two tablespoons of grass-fed butter, I would not be full, but because this is 130 calories of MCT oil, um, it keeps me really full. So I put I put this in, and then I put a tablespoon of butter. I put my sweetener in. I also put, just so that you know, I put a tablespoon of fiber. I put this superfoods powder, and I'll link all this down below. The superfoods powder uh, from a company called Wild Foods. I put a scoop of collagen in and then I put some inulin in. So this is all good for uh, your gut. Um, I mix it all up into this delicious, am I, am I in frame? Um, delicious concoction. And to answer what is probably gonna be <laughs> your next question, I, um, I know that I've calculated the macros for my coffee. It's the, the primary macros. I don't count the calories for my fiber or my collagen. Um, I, that's just me. Um, if you wanna get down to the nitty gritty and go, oh my God, you know, the calories for the collagen is like um, 40 calories. I don't even, I really don't even know what it is. Um, I've never, the whole time I was losing weight, 
I've never counted those kinds of calories. That's just me. If you want to count those calories and those macros, um, go nutty. That's my personal preference. I, I just don't. Um, so the way I've looked at my coffee is each one of those coffees, I count the butter, I count the, um, the keto cream, which is 130 calories. So 130 calories plus the butter. Each one of those is about 220 calories uh, for my coffee. So I, the way I look at it is two cups of coffee is about 450, is that right? 450 to 500 calories if I had both of them. So I just estimated it's about like 500 calories for my two cups of coffee. So after my morning cups of coffee, I look at it as I've banked 500 calories for the day. And then that leaves me with, if I'm aiming for 1600 calories to be in a caloric deficit, I've got 1100 calories left to have for dinner. And that leaves me with a pretty nice amount of calories left to eat for dinner. And it's highly unlikely I'm gonna go overboard and eat, you know, more than 1100 calories at dinner. Um, and that's why for me, OMAD, now, and, and even if I'm intermittent fasting, having two, two meals, you know, if I was intermittent fasting and doing that, and I, but normally when I intermittent fast, I would only have one cup of coffee. Um, and, and, and then I was fine. I would have, you know, one cup of coffee, 250 calories, and then that leaves me with about 1300 calories, about 650 calories per meal, if, if you will but then I just make sure I'm aware of what I'm eating at each meal, right? Um, so um, again, some people wanna, wanna take OMAD a little bit more hardcore, um, depending on if you wanna accelerate your weight loss, you could just get up and have uh, black coffee. I would think, here's my suggestion, if you have never done intermittent fasting before, I would say, I think my husband might be home. Um, if you've never done intermittent fasting before, I would not go hardcore, in my opinion, this is my recommendation, I wouldn't go right into OMAD. I would do intermittent fasting for like a month and then slide your way into OMAD. I think going right into OMAD would be <laughs> a bit of a challenge. I think a, a really good way is test yourself out on intermittent fasting, see how you like that, and then slide into OMAD. Um, and then the second thing is that, that, and I will talk about this, and I'm gonna do a separate video about this, is the biggest thing I hear people say that sets themselves up for disaster in, in this or in anything, whether, and I hear people do this about keto, don't say to yourself, I could never do that. I could never do one meal a day. I'd starve, I'd be so hungry. I could never do that. There's no way I could go without lunch. There's no way I could go without eating all day. Trust me, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, and if you think hard enough, if you're a busy mom, if you work in corporate America, if you're a combination of both, I guarantee you, there is some time that you have forgotten to eat lunch and you have gone almost all day, you've been a, stuck in an airport, stuck in airplanes, stuck in meetings, and you've gotten home and said, oh my God, I didn't even eat my lunch. My husband's come home and he's said that before. He's been like, I've been stuck in depositions all day. All I had to eat is, you know, like a power bar, like in the morning in the car on the way here. I haven't eaten all day. Everybody has done this intentionally or unintentionally. And that's really all you're, all you're doing with OMAD is, is just, if you can just distract yourself um, so that you keep yourself busy during the day, um, and, and you don't necessarily, let me also say this as well, it's not about with, with OMAD, um, like when I ate yesterday, I ate my meal, you know, before it was a certain amount of hours, like I ate at four o'clock. It doesn't have to be that. It's sometimes people get a little bit too religious with intermittent fasting about, you know, oh, my eating window is up at one o'clock. And so they'll be sitting there looking at their clock and it's five to one and they think, oh my God, if I eat at five to one, I've ruined my eating window. Like, your stomach doesn't care, you know? Um, if you wanna have your one meal a day, 
oh, like two hours earlier, and then you know you want to eat your one meal a day the next day. Like say, say you have one meal a day, and yesterday I ate it at four, and then today I decide we eat our one. We're gonna eat our one meal a day. Like say today I wanted to eat it at two. If I want to do that, that just means that, and then I'm going to wait until tomorrow and eat at six. That's just on me. I mean, I'm just kind of setting myself up for having to wait a little bit longer one day and, and wait a little bit less than the other day. But it just so happened that yesterday I ate a little bit earlier because my hunger pangs were stronger and I wanted to. You know, and there are other days where I can work with my mind and go, you know what? I'm just going to watch a show and truthfully, I'll have a Diet Coke. Don't judge me or judge me if you want. I don't care. Um, I'll have a Diet Coke and I'll just be like, I'm going to sit here and watch a show. And and I just do a little mind trick with myself. Like, hey, I'm going to see if I can last, you know, for another hour. I'm going to watch something else or I'm going to shoot my YouTube video and distract myself. I mean, at the end of the day, you're talking about a little hunger pain. It's not like you're going to die. It's not like you're going to get doubled over in pain and pass out. We're talking about little hunger pangs. And really, if you end up feeling really that queasy, then you just eat because we're not talking about starving ourselves. We're not talking about making ourselves sick. We're not talking about doing anything extreme. We're talking about delayed gratification. That's it. So um, I would love to answer any questions for you. Again, I don't consider myself an expert on this. The other thing that I was surprised at, I will tell you this, I'd love to say, let me link to some great resources for you. I was pleasantly displeased with the amount or lack of, of books on this topic. Um, I ordered two books from Amazon. I'm not even gonna recommend them to you. I, I hate saying that. Um, I ordered two books on OMAD and they were sorely disappointing. So I'm not even gonna recommend them to you. Um, I found that, frankly, me watching Ashley Salvatore's videos and then just doing OMAD on my own and experiencing it for myself. It was a very positive experience for me. Obviously, now that I'm back on it again and I've just been on it for five days and lost 2.5 inches, um, it's, it's just very easy to do. Um, and it allows you, again, um, I'm keto, you guys. You don't have to be keto to do OMAD. You can do OMAD and not be keto. It really is a great way, I think, for you to, um, I'm not saying it's, it's not a great way for you to eat more, eat more when you do eat and probably enjoy bigger meals if that's the way you'd like to do it. So I think there's benefits there too. And a lot of people like that. So let me know what questions you have. I hope this was helpful. I will definitely keep you guys posted week by week on my results and how, um, and then what'll be interesting is, you know, we'll see my first seven weeks being back on keto, how my weight loss and my, um, my measurements were. And then we'll see the next seven weeks on OMAD and let's let's compare and let's see how much was it highly accelerated I think that's what we're gonna see um, which is gonna be exciting and really cool so stay tuned let me know what questions you guys have in the comments and again if you liked this video please hit the like button and I would love to hear from you in the comments as well thanks so much for tuning in I will see you guys next time on the Kelly O show guys thanks so much for tuning in I hope you found this video helpful I'm going to link down below to everything I promised I hope and of course I'm gonna to link to my uh, keto playlist so you can tune into that as well thanks again see you next time